Hi there, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Norman Parolo. I'm a furniture designer maker based in Canada. I'd like to present a master class on woodworking from design to making. I'll display the, uh, the structure of, what we're, of the, uh, the master class and just prior to that I'll introduce, uh, I'll talk about my background and, and uh, how I've progressed from, uh, from a box maker to a furniture maker and all the education I've had and, and uh, I'll give you uh, a few images of, of the work I've done over, over the past 25 years. So the master class is based on woodworking from design to making. I wish to convey my methodology, my, uh, my work methods and my processes and uh, techniques I've uh, learned over the uh, past decades on uh, how to create furniture, how to start with the design, how to progress through the design. It's an iterative process and I'll get into that. So woodworking, design and making, I'll just uh, present the uh, the breakdown of the uh, the class. We'll start with an introduction. Again, I'll talk about a little bit about my background, so you'll have some context about the, my knowledge and uh, my expertise in the area. Then we'll get in straight into the design process, so how to visualize and flesh out a design. Uh, selecting wood is very critical in uh, furniture making. The workshop, efficient workflow having the right machines. So you can have either a hybrid environment of machines and hand tools or just machines or, or just hand tools but we'll discuss machines of course. All about hand tools, discover hand tools next. Uh, bench accessories very important as uh, work aids and furniture making. Uh, jigs to speed production and uh, great for repeatability. Uh, templates for uh, small batches, and if you want to market your the furniture you create in small batches, for example, uh, half a dozen chairs or a few tables in a series. All about joinery, knowing your joinery, very critical in furniture making, the basis of furniture making. Uh, raising your precision, how precision and accuracy can uh, and help with interchangeability of components between furniture pieces, which uh, will greatly uh, speed your production because you can actually create components in batches rather and then assemble the, the components later. All about veneering which is something I uh, near and dear to me. I use veneering considerably in my own work. It's incredible at popping your designs and introducing color and uh, figure and uh, focal point in the furniture making process. We'll get into some technology Although I don't use too much technology, the only technology I really use is a computer-aided design and I'll, I will discuss that and how it can aid your, uh, your design process, uh, the latter part of your design process, and then we'll, uh, we'll conclude the, uh, the master class. The, uh, the class itself will be a combination of my talking and some images, and I'll, the images are, will be coming up as I speak because it's such a large and uh, the breadth of the class is so large needs to be structured so I need to have images and, and all that to convey all the information I'm discussing. So I'll talk about myself a little bit or maybe more than a little bit. I originally began as a uh, uh, with a cabinet making diploma way back when, can't even go that far and then I, uh, I sort of uh, stumbled upon box making through bandsaw boxes. My first piece of equipment was a, ba was a bandsaw and I and not much to do with it except research what I could build with it and bandsaw boxes. Bandsaw boxes was uh, was instrumental in my, my early box making and so the bandsaw boxes progressed to uh, rectangular square boxes and joinery and I uh, developed this over a period of a few years to the point where I began to market them. First, I marketed them locally, and at the time, uh, internet was in its uh, in, was in its infancy, and I just accidentally stumbled upon some marketing opportunities on the internet, and all of a sudden, I could sell the work locally through the internet, and then uh, afterwards, establishing my own website in the uh, 19, 1997 98 period, and that quickly ramped up my marketing to uh, outside my, my, my local uh, area to uh, throughout North America and parts of Europe. And this was, was exciting at the time for me because all of a sudden I, uh, began, to, I began to receive all, all kinds of orders that I couldn't keep up with. So I had to devise all these techniques and processes to, to speed some production up, 
most of my work at the time, although I had studied cabinet making, was, uh, was machine oriented, very little hand tools, although I had some background in hand tools. It's only later that I had a real discovery of hand tools in uh, the early 2000s. So the box making progressed and the business improved year over year. My, my boxes improved year over year to the point where I just couldn't keep up with the orders. Even though I, uh, <coughs> I slowly increased the prices, the price points of uh, my boxes, and the boxes became more and more complex because <coughs> I like to challenge myself. So I introduced uh, my first offerings were a single level, then a two level, then a three level with a drawer. And I have some upcoming images of that. So that, that was exciting. So the price points went up, and uh, so I thought by increasing the prices, my, my orders would drop. And although it did work to some degree, the orders kept up, and and I, I was at the point where I eventually overwhelmed with orders, and I couldn't keep up. And then I sort of uh, had a departure into cigar humidors. They were quite popular in the late 1990s or mid to late 1990s and uh, early 2000s cigar humidors, and I started to market basically essentially the same box without the jewelry components and rather than that I had a Spanish cedar uh, lining and uh, all the hardware to convert it to a, uh, a cigar humidor. So that worked also and that again expanded my sales to the point where I was totally overwhelmed. So I had to make a decision that I want to expand the business and just become a full-time box maker and I could probably survive doing that or uh, follow my original goal which uh, I haven't really mentioned, but my original goal was to create furniture. And uh, I sort of ran out of challenges with the box making. I was making some very popular boxes. They were sort of complex to create. And I, I didn't see myself introducing any more complexity into the boxes. So I think, so I thought at the time my, my challenges would, would soon run out with box making. And then the only challenge left was to get into production, to speed box making up. And that's really not where I wanted to go with, uh, with woodworking. I wanted to, you know, my goal was to become a furniture designer maker. One thing led to another and I discovered a small, recently uh, open school in the area based on the uh, curriculum of College of the Redwoods at James Cranoff's school. And the, uh, the owner of the school actually studied with James Cranoff. So this, uh, so I studied there for a period of three year, over a period of three years on and off. Uh, accepting more to work with uh, with hand tools, a more of an appreciation to work with hand tools, and uh, so it opened up so many new challenges with, for me because although I had some hand tools, I very rarely rarely used them before, and I uh, the school was uh, the premise of the school was 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 hand tool based, uh, hand tool woodworking and furniture making, and. Um, even the finishing process, there was very almost no sandpaper involved in any of any any finishing, following very true to uh, James Cranoff philosophy, no sandpaper. So this opened my eyes and to a new form of, uh, of woodworking, and all of a sudden I I felt invigorated and I wanted to pursue furniture making with uh, using hand tools mostly. So I slowly migrated my my workflow to to benches, workbenches and hand tools and this one thing led to another and I began to create James Cranoff style uh, cabinets on stand for a number of years. I'm still doing that today. This has become my style essentially. I have a great appreciation for that, that style and uh, I still enjoy it and I add elements to challenge myself. Uh, I've embraced veneers over the years, veneer work and I create my own veneers. So one thing led to another and uh, my furniture making and design has evolved over a period of 15 to 16, 18 years now, and uh, that's where I am today. And I've also taken on a uh, woodworking educator role. So I've developed some uh, some woodworking courses, furniture design courses, uh, hand tool classes, and uh, written a few books over the years. And these are some of the books I've, uh, I've written. To start your own woodworking business. Essentially, my my ex my experience with uh, woodworking business. Some, a book on a wood artist. What when I um, had a departure from from furniture and into wood sculpture for a period of time. That was another accident, accidental discovery, and uh, the whole book on that. And then my my actual journey from uh, my former high tech career to uh, to woodworking and all the uh, the ups and downs and uh, and all the problems I had in uh, 
and moving from a part-time woodworking to full-time woodworking uh, furniture making and that uh, this book uh, is it's a great inspiration for anybody who wants to follow a similar path and, uh, and you have a current career you're not happy with and you want to uh, move into woodworking or furniture making it's a good book to, uh, to understand a little more and one of my more recent books is uh, woodworking from design and making and this is uh, it's actually a large part of this class is uh, is based on this book with uh, it's quite uh, in considerably more detail and uh, this is uh, I'll put this aside this is the book I uh, the uh, the book I like to show people that began my I uh, began my journey into woodworking with the fine art of cabinet making by James Crenoff one of his first books in the uh, 1970s I think mid 1970s 77 or so uh, 76 this was the textbook for my original cabinet making classes my one of my first cabinet making classes maybe 30 years ago over 30 years ago and I still keep the same book and I still reread re this book along with his other books for inspiration and every time I read it I glean something new from it it's a uh, black and white imagery but I, uh, I, I was able to create cabinet on stand so I'll provide some insight into my methodology my work methods uh, workflow design processes and, and the tools I use in my work how I work <coughs> concept to finish furniture uh, the iterative process of design fleshing out a design from a sketch and uh, I'll discuss the, uh, the mindset of a furniture maker promoting myself and the methods of introducing precision and accuracy uh, into my work and then hopefully yours. So as you can see in the uh, in the image this is how I began with the bandsaw boxes uh, circa 1995. I still got these uh, a few of these left these unfinished uh, bandsaw boxes and this excited me into uh, moving into box making. A little more information on the uh, jewelry boxes that I began to create in the late 1990s through the early 2000 years you can see a pile of them there this is a uh, small batch and I probably created a, a few of these batches over the uh, over a year maybe three to four batches of these over the year and I kept increasing the the number of boxes within a batch to about 18 to 20 with different size and different configurations but essentially the same dimensions this was probably one of my more popular boxes I forget the title of the box but and I embraced jigs and templates and how to apply them to be able to create the model and interchange components within them. So I introduced, uh, I created a design that introduced standardization of components. I was critical to work in batch mode and this is where I, I, uh, I gained all my, uh, my expertise in creating furniture pieces and boxes in batch mode. So the, the, the client was so uh, had a greater selection of woods and features but essentially the same box uh, dimensions aside from some if you notice some some larger boxes at the bottom left those are uh, custom one one of a kind and this is a series of three that are in the process of being completed uh, it's a very very small batch and uh, with standardized dimensions and layouts the options i would uh, provide was uh, with were different woods uh, inset lock ring holders this is about 2001 and so far back that a router table in the back is probably one of my first router tables and I have since moved on this is the uh, the most popular jewelry box I was marketing at the time it's a three level I mean two level with a uh, with a drawer you could either have it with or without the drawer sliding tray so you can view all the compartments and you had a choice of mahogany cherry uh, for for the case or walnut with wenge handles or natural cherry handles or mahogany this is about 2001 and this was extremely popular i also had an option for a contrasting top like a bird's eye maple top or a, some a figure of wood another box i introduced a little later was a, a bombay style jewelry box a little more uh, involved in creating this but essentially the same profile or dimensions of box and this was uh, again mahogany and lace wood, three levels without a drawer in this case. It was quite uh, quite a popular box. This one, I, as I mentioned earlier, in my in my background, I, I followed my some studies at a, a Rosewood Studio, a, a local uh, furniture making uh, furniture design school, 
and I uh, began to create cabinets on stand in, uh, in James Cranoff style, or at least I attribute most of my work to, uh, to his style and philosophy. To the right, you can see a, uh, one of my earlier cabinets on stand with some inlay, and the top is quarter on cherry, the cabinet itself, and then the bottom is a maple. I tried to use domestic woods at the time, and this is probably very similar to one of his pieces in structure with the, bird, the bird's uh, feet to extend the actual depth of it, and I'll get into that in the design. To the left is a uh, more recent cabinet on stand of my own design with uh, Kamiko door panels. I began to work with Kamiko uh, two or three years ago, and I wanted to incorporate that in furniture, and uh, so this was uh, because I do the cabinets on stand. I, I customized uh, the door, these do particular door panels, so I can uh, incorporate the Kamiko panels for a dramatic effect. Another of my more recent cabinets, a tambour cabinet, and this is a twist on the uh, on the concept of tambour. They don't move; they're static, but creating a focal point with a, a tambour element in the in the door panels. Again, it's a cabinet on stand and. Uh, I experiment with different woods. This is uh, black limba uh, at the base and then maple at the top. I'm trying to use domestic woods more, more so now than uh, earlier because I have a good supply of domestic woods and they're a, a little less expensive than uh, uh, imported woods. Uh, two more of my, uh, I wouldn't say recent pieces, but in the last three to four years to the left is another cabinet on stand with uh, figured uh, Door panels, uh, curly maple, the book matched in this case. So the expanse is uh, to feature the, uh, the complete figure of the wood without a frame and panel. So the, uh, the door is just the panel itself with contrasting uh, cherry base or stand. And to the right is I try to introduce color into my work through the, the element of the door. So I, uh, the door is uh, dyed with an aniline water-based dye and uh, creates a motif or a pattern to, intr to introduce color into a piece. So it's a wall-hanging cabinet. More of my work, a convergence cabinet to the left. Again, it's figured <coughs> book match to veneers. I introduce uh, this element of uh, book matching veneers into door panels as a, as a focal point on the cabinets because the cabinets were typically re rectangular or square and uh, they, they could be uh, very similar otherwise so I had to have a distinguishing feature in the cabinet and a focal point so I so I created these uh, a series of cabinets with book match veneers for the uh, door fronts and to the right is a wall hanging cabinet with a little bit of a different twist I have exterior uh, drawers along with in, in, interior drawers and a contrasting uh, cherry case with a contrasting spalted, uh, spalted elm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, door panel, which is unfinished for uh, more of a contrast. Another cabinet featuring Kamiko, incorporating Kamiko into the door panels. This is all maple with a black limba base and uh, Kamiko door panels. So you can actually view the, uh, the interior of the cabinet from the outside. And uh, when it's lit, if there's a illumination within the cabinet. You can, you can. It, it's quite dramatic. Another cabinet on the left. This is a slightly larger cabinet featured in the uh, 500 cabinets book. The uh, the right is uh, is how I compose my interiors. It's typically three to four drawers like this, very low, uh, situated very low in the cabinet. So I, so the upper part of the uh, the compartment can be used for. Uh, for decorative art objects. Uh, so I sometimes stagger them like this, and or I just put four or two. But uh, this one is staggered because there's actually a compartment just below the leftmost uh, top drawer. Uh, it's a hidden compartment. And I use dovetails in my joinery for drawer fronts. This is uh, a photo of, uh, I like to throw this in because my, I have a complete book based on, um, on wood art and how I I had a departure into wood art and it was completely accidentally. This is one of my uh, last exhibitions at Dimensions 2014 and this is the peak of my, uh, my wood sculpture. So these are actually veneered pieces with 
veneers and uh, introduce color and uh, so this is uh, a style I was trying to uh, associate myself with at the time. Within a year or two I slowly went back to furniture making. I decided that I enjoyed furniture making a little more so that was uh, that completely the departure was uh, overwhelming for me and it was either furniture making or wood art or sculpture. I'd established a considerable number of contacts in the uh, in the sculptural sculptural uh, uh, community, but uh, but I've since gone back to uh, full time furniture design and making. So this uh, I'd like to throw this photo in because this is contemporary art and it's uh, more of an organic uh, aesthetic I, I created, and it's at the peak. The next segment is the design process, and it's all about ensuring successful design 